What's up, party people? How you doing today? Welcome to episode number five of Cooking with Cocktails. I'm T, and over here we do all the things. On the menu today is going to be my take on red beans and rice. Well, the reason I said my take is because I'm out of red beans, so I'm using pencil beans. Keep your fingers crossed to see how it turns out, because this will be my very first time making red beans and rice using pencil beans. So therefore we're having pencil beans and rice. Neither here nor there, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good, but y'all stick around and see how it turns out. Hey y'all, what's up? I'm so glad to be back in the kitchen with you guys today. As you can see, there's no cocktail here, no ingredients for a cocktail. It is a week of celebration because Friday, baby girl graduates from college. So I technically should be having a sparkling wine, but I'm gonna wait for her to get home and open a bottle. Need some water, cause y'all know that allergies get that little tickle in your throat. Gotta keep that on hand. So the drink of choice today is going to be this Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc that I picked up from Trader Joe's. It's a 2023, so we're gonna talk about this later, but I think it would pair nicely with this meal. So um, let me move that out of the way and we're gonna pop that open soon. All right, let's get into preparing the meal. It's going to need to cook at least two hours and it's kind of late, so I'm probably gonna end up having this tomorrow, but at least it'll be done and it'll last us a couple of days. It'll last a few days actually, because you're gonna have rice with it and that's gonna make it stretch. So since I didn't have kidney beans, I am using pinto beans. I feel like my head is being cut off, but it is what it is. So I've soaked a pound of pinto beans overnight. So they are ready. I have gone through and picked out any of the loose skins. I've already picked out the, um, like you know the little, when the beans pop in half, I've picked those out too. So you're gonna need a pound of beans. So typically I do add some turkey, um, just some smoked turkey to it, just to have it shredded in there. But say it with me, I'm all out of it. <laughs> so I won't be having that. And because my husband does not eat andouille sausage, I'm using smoked turkey for him. And for myself, I'm using tofurkey, the Italian kind, because y'all know I don't eat meat. So we're gonna make it so that both of us can enjoy this meal. I'm gonna half the recipe. I'm gonna like, once I boil everything, I'm gonna make everything split it in half. That way we'll have two pots of the same meal. Now you're gonna need six to seven cups of chicken broth. I'm out of chicken broth. I know, I just said I was out of the turkey. Don't come for me. <laughs> so use the chicken bouillon if you have any. This is really good and I feel like it has more flavor than what you get that's already prepared in the box or in the can. Three fourths teaspoon to one cup of water. That's a cup of chicken broth. Now I did add a little more than what I should have or not I should have, I added a little more than what the measurements call for only because as it cooked, as it boiled, I noticed that it needed a little more flavor. So I did add like just a smidge more of the bouillon. And this is a pro tip. I keep chicken bouillon, vegetable bouillon, and beef bouillon on hand, just in case I don't have the ones that you can buy, you know, already prepared. So our chicken broth is ready. Here's our chicken broth. I don't even know if you guys can see it. So let me get a spoon so I can spoon it and show you what it looks like. Not that you don't know what chicken broth looks like, but I want to show you that. I wish I had some clear um, spoons or white spoons, but I'm just going to scoop it up and I'm going to pour it, let it fall into the pan. So you can see that it's not just plain water. It is a nice chicken broth and it smells delicious. So I'm going to let this sit and just hang out while we prepare the rest of the stuff. So for this meal, you're gonna need the six to seven cups of chicken broth, two ribs, two to three ribs of celery. I'm only gonna use two because I need the rest of my celery to make my juice. Um, we have six cloves of garlic. We have, um, this is a nice size sweet onion. I'm only gonna use half of that. 
I'm gonna use half of this red pepper and half of this green pepper. Why? Because typically I use a small pepper and these are nice size. So I'm gonna use half of all three of these. The aromatics are gonna be what, you know, <laughs> is the star of the show for real, which is this garlic, the onion, and the other little seasonings that are gonna go in, like the parsley and, oh, speaking of parsley, you're gonna use some chopped parsley for your garnish as well as some green onion, some fresh green onion. All right, so let's sit those to the side. All right, and I already told you about the chicken broth and I told you about the wine. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and cut up our meats or meat substitute. We're gonna go ahead and cut those up so that they can go in the pan and start to cook. And I came over here with a cutting board, all of my ingredients, and no knife. So let me go and grab a knife so that we can cook, I mean, so that we can cut up all of our things. Now, um, I should have brought the pot over here because I am going to add a little bit of olive oil, just enough to cover the bottom. Let me move that out of the way so that you can see. Um, I should have brought the pot over here because I'm going to go ahead and add some olive oil to the bottom. That way I can add the meat to both pans. I'm gonna be using two pans, so I have extra dishes for myself today. Um, and we're gonna cook the meats so that they begin to like get that little crust on them because we want that to add some flavor to the pan. Once we put our beans in and everything, we want the pan to already have some good flavor in there. So tell me how you guys have been. Have you tried any of the recipes that I have cooked? Do you, have you tried a new recipe? And here I go again, not putting on the, I'm not gonna go through this today. I'm just not even doing it to myself. And the reason I'm adding this is because it will help stop the cutting board from sliding. All right, so back to business at hand. Have you tried any new recipes? And if so, drop down in the comments or have you tried, like, you know, brought back one of your old recipes that you hadn't had in quite some time? Um, have you done that recently? Let's talk about it. All right, so I like to cut sausage on an angle. Um, I used to love andouille sausage, and I'm pretty sure I still like it. I just don't eat it. So we're going to slide this over. Last June, I challenged myself to see how long I could go just being a pescatarian, and I just kept doing it. Now, I have tasted meat here and there, but it didn't agree with me, and I think that's because my body was like, wait a minute, hold, wait a minute, what you doing? I ain't used to this no more. So I just backed on out of that door and went back into the hallway where I belong. And now I'm going to cut up my tofurkey, which is a plant-based sausage. Y'all, I am so excited for my daughter. I am so proud of her, super excited. <sighs> this was, let me just tell y'all, God is so good because college is expensive. It is extremely expensive. As pretty much our, everybody knows um and um it was by his grace that she got through it with this um with the price tag like this one nothing but god and i am so grateful and even more so ecstatic and excited for her for her new journey in life you know tr you know where she'll what she'll do with her fashion design degree and so for those of you didn't know who don't know she was a um fashion major so she's made some really nice pieces and super proud of her um because two of her pieces did make it into the final show of the school year so that'll be taking place also and um i'll try to share as much as i can from the fashion show as well as the graduation ceremony because y'all have seen her on here y'all's internet niece y'all have seen her on videos before and i just want to share it with you and she's excited for me to share it all right so now that i've cut up the the different meats the two different meats i'm going to get two pans 
add some olive oil to them so that they can begin to cook and while they are cooking I'm going to cut up everything else and get it prepared. So while the um, pans heat up for the different sausages I'm going to show you I have divided the beans and I'm making so many dishes for myself to watch today but it's fine. This is about three cups and this is three cups of beans so I'm going to take these over to the stove because I want everything to already be over there as I'm adding you know once I need to add things in. Here's my four cups each of the chicken broth. So I'm going to sit the two things of chicken broth over on the stove on either side of the stove so that they'll be prepared when it's time to pour the broth in. And as you can see, I'm lining it up in the order of use. So the chicken broth first and then the beans. Here's my pot. So I'm going to use the larger pot for his because he has a little more meat that has to go in it. So I don't want it to spill over. And there's the pot that I'm going to use for my um, vegetarian version. And here's the broth and the beans. All right. So while that sits over there and heats up, let's go ahead and open up this wine. So today is actually going to be for our wine drinkers. All right, let's see what this Sauvignon Blanc is all about. Now, I used to not be a fan of white wines, but once I started um, trying different ones, I realized I really do like white wine. It's really good if you get a good white wine. So let's go ahead and swirl this. A little wine tip. You always want to see it. You want to look for the wine just to tell the color of it to see if there's any cork in it this is not a corked wine so we don't have to worry about that then you want to swirl it and that swirling is only going to wake up all those beautiful aromas and flavors that are in the wine oh then you want to smell it girl let me tell you this one smells just like a good crisp granny smith apple some pineapple it's very tropical. I'm getting Granny Smith apple, pineapple, some citrus. This smells amazing. And again, I got this one from Trader Joe's. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Here, smell that. Let's go ahead and smell it. Doesn't it smell good? Mmm. Okay. Has a nice tartness to it. Definitely getting those tropical fruits on the back end. It's, it's extremely fruity. This one is very fruity. Oh my gosh. This makes your mouth water. So let's see if they have any notes. And I am going to put my um, wine saver on this bottle before I refrigerate it. Uh, let's see. Picton Bay Sauvignon Blanc is classic Marlboro in style, vibrant, fresh, fruity um, from New Zealand, which typically Sauvignon Blancs are from there. Um, doesn't have anything else up here uh, about like the, the aromas, what you should get on your nose or on your palate. Uh, it is 12.5% alcohol by volume. This one, I saw it on... Um, Samantha Somalier, Samantha the Somalier or Somalier Samantha, something like that. I forget how to say her name, but it's Samantha and she's a Psalm and she's on IG. I will try my best to remember and put like a screenshot of her on here because I love her page on Instagram. She gives like some of the best wine, wine pairings with snacks and things and she has not failed me yet. Oh my gosh. This is so good and it's just so tropical and it's just juicy and it's not, it's not a sweet wine. It's an off dry wine. So it's, it's perfectly bottled. Oh my gosh, that's good. Out of five glasses, I'm going to give that one four. I'm going to give it four. I rarely ever give a wine five glasses unless it's one of my reds because y'all know I'm a red girl. That's neither here nor there today because we're talking about beans and rice and this white wine. Let's go and check on our pot and see if it's ready for our sausages. I have it on low so they're not quite ready yet. So what I'm gonna do is just move this out of the way. I'm actually gonna put this in a bag and freeze it. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started cutting up the all of the ingredients to go inside because we don't wanna 
belabor the cooking of the meal because it already has like i said it's got to cook for at least two hours um and it's going to cook on medium on a medium heat all right um so that's that and i'm just going to grab another cut i think it's ready because i do hear it popping i was going to grab another cutting board to start cutting up everything else but I think the pans are ready so let's go ahead and put our meats into the pans all right so as you can see i have the turkey in here the turkey smoked turkey sausages in here and you want to try to make sure that it's not completely stacked on one another because you want to try to make sure all of your edges get nice and cooked and nice and brown and crunchy but leaving the inside texture nice so that's going to cook for a little bit and we're going to then flip it over so that we can cook the other side. Over here, we have the tofurkey doing the same exact thing. We have olive oil in the pan. You could also use um, avocado oil or even grapeseed. Now, grapeseed oil does cook faster, so I'm using olive oil. So let's go ahead and get this garlic done first. And I'm just gonna use the same bowl that I just had the beans in. I rinsed it out. I banged on that counter kind of hard. I made the stuff in the sink move. I don't know my own. Didn't know my own strength. All right. And like I said, we got six cloves of garlic. And we're going to cut it. <clears throat> now for me, since I'm doing two different pots, I'm going to divide the garlic cloves in half, just like I did the, the beans, the broth. <clears throat> and that way when I you know dump everything in the pots I'll have everything already separated but since if you're not having to do two separate pots of your dish you can just cut it all up together instead of having to worry about separating it but I'm trying to make it you know even flavored evenly I'll be so glad when my garlic in the garden is ready to Cool. it's not quite there yet but this store-bought stuff man i mean it is crazy <clears throat> i need some water because my throat is getting that tickle all right so we're just gonna go ahead and chop our garlic if you want it finely minced you can do it finely minced i'm just gonna um give it a nice rough chop y'all know that's my favorite words rough chop my favorite way to cut things i do have the tools that i could easily mince the garlic but what fun is that what fun is that this is the fun part the prep to me this is the fun part because i like to cook i like to cook i like to eat good food um yeah so that's that and now that I'm saying this out loud, it doesn't make sense for me to add all of the stuff to one bowl because I'm doing two separate pots. So we're going to keep, get off my finger skin, not my skin, the garlic skin. We're going to go ahead and keep it separate. <clears throat> How y'all been doing? What is going on? What's new with you? What is new? Anything exciting happening? So the garlic is now chopped for both. And how's y'all's weather? Like ours went bipolar for on us for a few days. So I did get some gardening done this past weekend, which was nice. I can't wait to share those videos with you guys. Um, I recorded as much as I could before um it started raining i think it was sunday that we had some sprinkles saturday was it it was the perfect weather it was not hot it wasn't too cold it was the perfect weather we were supposed to be going to a derby that was here but we ended up not going um which was fine with me because i really had a lot of stuff that i needed to get done in the garden i'll be sharing that video with you guys pretty soon um let's go and check on the sausages because i can smell them they smell so good 
Yep, they are cooking up really nicely. Some of them are a little browner than the others, but that's fine because it's all going to get cooked. No sausage left behind. All right. And you can see in the pan, it's starting to get a little bit of flavoring from the sausage. It's starting to adhere to the pan, and we're just going to leave all of this in here because the more flavor in the pan, the better the meal will be. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit, just a little bit. All right, now let's check on. And even with the meat substitute, you can see here, we're getting some seasoning in the pan from, from this. And this is cooking faster. And the heat is actually lower on this. So this meat substitute does cook a little faster, as we can see. And this is one of my favorite um, little um, meat substitute sausages. I may have should have put in three pieces in here, but it's fine because I, I mean, it's protein is my, my big thing is making sure I get a, a good amount of protein in since I don't eat meat. So between this and the beans, I'll have the perfect amount of protein and I can always break it up in my, you know, break it up in the bowl or whatever. It won't break up in the pan perfectly. So that's that. And I'm going to turn this heat down to low, but I'm going to let this one continue to cook some. And now let's go and finish cutting up the rest of our um, things. Right, so we're going to now go ahead and cut up our celery. And this is going to be diced. Just cut it down the middle. And I don't like really big pieces because you want it to be able to spread throughout the pot. Like you want a bite of everything in your, when you're eating, you want a bite of everything to go into the, um, the pan. I mean, into your bowl. So we have a rib cut up for one bowl and now we're going to cut up the other rib. And it looks like more when you're making one big pot of it, but since we're dividing everything into two, it makes it look like it's not as much, but it's about, it's the same. It's just cut in half. And this will be the same if you're like trying to make the meal for um, just one person. You want to half your recipe so that you don't have so much of the dish remaining left over. It's the same thing. I got a couple of those ribs that didn't quite cut down. And because it's going to be cooking slow, well, it's going to be on medium because I'm not using the crock pot. Um, it's still going to be, it's still going to be like melting your mouth. So that's the celery all cut up. Now, whoopsie, get in that bowl. Get in there with your sisters and brothers. Don't be like that. Now let's go ahead and cut this onion up. Now let's go ahead and cut the pepper. We need a smaller knife though. I do not like cutting peppers with big knives. We have our smaller knife. And yes, I'm just using a regular old steak knife. I think next week's... um video i was thinking about doing like a full big old meal i don't know i think i just broke my knife i did let's let's get another knife while i went to retrieve another knife i noticed that all of the sausage is cooked and ready to go so now what we're gonna do is cut these peppers up and then we're going to take the um, the sausages out of both pans so that we can add the peppers, the onions, and the garlic to everything. 
I feel like I'm slow today. I don't know if it's because I'm tired or it's because I have so many things going on in my head at one time. But I feel like I'm moving slow today. Am I moving slow today to y'all? And if I am, my apologies. But I want to make sure I get, you know, the recipe right. I don't want to miss any steps because I want y'all to be able to follow along. Because what good is it for me to prepare a meal and call this cooking with cocktails or as we are having today wine if i'm not showing you step by step what good is it for me to rush through it right so those sausage smells so good and i'm not like some people like you know how when some people stop eating meat the meat smells weird to them meat always smells weird to me <laughs> but when it's cooked it'd be smelling good it'd be smelling good So, can y'all believe that we are already in May? What in the entire world? It's like, it was just Christmas. It was like literally just Christmas. And here we are. It's about to be Memorial Day. And I'm glad because I need a day off. I actually need a few days off. So, I took an extra day. Yep, sure did. They give us one day. I'm taking an extra one because I be needing a break. I think that the U.S. should get like other countries and adopt like those those bank. I think what is it called a bank holiday when they, everybody gets off work and then they get like nap times during the day. I think we need to adopt those things. I would really benefit, and I think it would take um some of the stress off of people with their work day if they had like that small little break in the day to actually recharge because a 30 minute lunch honey that is not recharging it's like i'm glad that i work from home because when i was in the office i would literally i would bring my lunch sometimes i would try to shoot down the street to the um grocery store or one of the like there was a Panera down the street and a, you know a few other places I would try to shoot down there to um and I just did that wrong Ooh, I just realized what I did crap all right so don't do like me what you want to do first is cook your onions and your garlic together but since I have put all of it in one bowl it's all gonna get cooked together you're supposed to just cook your onions and garlic first. Once that cooks, then you want to add your celery and your bell peppers um, to the pot. We're not doing that today. It's all going to cook and it's still going to taste fabulous. But anyway, back to the whole lunch thing. Like it's, it's really like I was watching a video of uh, another subscriber I like, Christy Danielle. She was like, how long is your lunch break? And I think she did a short. And she's like, basically, you know, it's like you blink and it's time to go back in the building. And it's even that way with me at home because I come downstairs, might try to, you know, get some stuff done on the porch or just walk through the yard or whatever. Try to get like a little 20 minute workout in. The next thing you know, it's time to go log back in. And with our system, because I do have to punch in, sometimes that joker don't be wanting to work. It just be doing whatever. Oh, I just had a thought. I can do the, t the onions. I can cook the onions first and then add the rest of the stuff since the garlic is all the way on the bottom. Y'all remind me next time to make sure that I cook my garlic, um, put my garlic, cut up the garlic last. That way I won't have to um, be over here sacrificing the speed of what's cooking because y'all know garlic and onions cooks a lot faster than all of these these two fruits isn't that pretty so pretty my screen just went dark i don't know why it does that does anyone else know about the sony zv1f why the screen just like gets dark sometimes can anyone help me with that um, maybe it's because of the battery and I can't even see 
where my battery life is right now. Maybe if I take a sip of wine, that'll help me see it. Oh, that's good. Nope, it didn't help. All right, so I think it is the battery that is causing the screen to go dark like that because I checked the battery and it is getting low. I have butchered this onion. Gee, Willie Mo. Um, so we're just gonna go at it until I need to change my screen, my own um, battery. But I just showed you the um, the pans and the different meats and how they look. So now we're going to let's rinse this knife. Was that an onion skin? Run away. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the onion up and here we go with another bad onion I just don't get it y'all I'm back so I solved the mystery it was the battery for sure because as I was talking the camera cut off so now I know that when the screen is getting dark like that my battery is dying all right we're gonna hurry up and get these onions in the pan there we go with that nasty skin situation again Ugh. because our pan is popping it's popping um so we're gonna go ahead and dice this onion up really quickly and because y'all know we love onion over here i'm not gonna cut the pieces too small but they will be um nice size pieces they won't be minced they're gonna be what say it with me now roughly chopped Y'all, we got some projects we got to get, get to doing with the house. So I'm going to try my best to share some of our home improvements with you guys. Y'all know he does not like being on camera, so he will not. I'm not going to share anything that he's doing um, just because I want to respect people's privacy. Um, you know, camera is not for everybody. And it has nothing to do with <laughs> whether they want it or not. It's, um, it's just the simple fact that, you know, being on camera is not for everybody. These pieces of onion are horrible. All right, if you notice, there's more oil in this pan and you have like little crunchy bits. This pan is mostly just crunchy bits and that's because the meat substitute does not create the amount of oil that regular meat does because there's no fat in it to create that you know it's natural oils all right because there's no oil in this pan from the tofurkey i'm gonna add some butter that way it will give it some oil to cook those onions and as you can see this pan is cooking up the onions really nicely and you can see that flavoring attaching to the onions This pan looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and add the remaining ingredients in here. Let's try to cut this piece of onion down some. Mm, it ain't even gonna worry about it because it won't sit still. All right, and this one is good. So let's go ahead and add in the peppers and onions and garlic. And I am gonna scoop the rest of it out. The garlic that's stuck to the bottom just give me a second i'm holding the camera so i don't really have a free hand because <laughs> i'm trying to stir everything look how pretty it is oh my gosh it's so pretty all right so in here we have our broth we have our peppers and onions, and we have the same thing in this pot. And we're just waiting for the heat to kick up. Let me get a cloth, because I don't like a whole bunch of stuff on my stove top. And I know we're cooking, and so you should expect that, but to me, cleanliness is next to godliness. No, that's not why. I just, <laughs> I just like to keep it clean because I just don't like looking at a bunch of stuff all over my stove when I cook. That's just me though. 
I know y'all think I'm crazy and it's all right it's all right so we're just gonna wait till these actually come up to temp some we wanted to um we're gonna wait for them to start boiling before we put in our beans all right we're getting ready to season this up and we're gonna add in first some red pepper and that's i have measurements for it but I like a little heat so i'm gonna add extra um i'll make sure that the ingredients and the measurements are in the description box and i'll try to get them on the screen as well so that was our red pepper then we're going to add some oregano and We're going to go ahead and measure this out because oregano is strong. So you're going to add a teaspoon of oregano into each pot. Oh, you know what? It should probably be a half a teaspoon. Dag nabbit, I just added a whole teaspoon. All right, we got a half a teaspoon in his pot, a whole teaspoon in mine. So mine is going to have that extra zing. All right. Then you're going to add... Your total amount of thyme is going to be one teaspoon of dried thyme. And of course, like I said, since I'm making it into two pots, we're going to do a half of thyme in there. And we're going to go with a half a teaspoon of thyme in that pot. Then with your um, your paprika, you're gonna add for it's gonna be about a half teaspoon um, total. So I did about a half a teaspoon in each pot when at from shaking. Now this is not in the recipe, the traditional recipe that I use. I like to use either Cajun season or Creole seasoning. I have Creole season on hand, so we're gonna add this in, and this is really gonna be our salt element. And this stuff will make you sneeze. And make sure that you taste it because you don't want it to have all these beautiful ingredients in here. You think it's going to be nice and flavorful and you don't taste it and it is either bland or low on flavor. I'm feeling like I want to add a little bit more water to this pot. add about it's not quite I'm not gonna add two cups so it's at seven about seven cups I added about a cup added about another cup of water to that pot and about a cup to that pot just because it didn't look like it was gonna have enough in there you want it you don't want your red beans and rice to be soupy or your we're not doing red beans you don't want your beans and rice to be soupy but before you put your beans in you still want a good broth doesn't that look good now we're going to go ahead and add our bay leaf. And my bay leaves are really small. So um, I'm going to add, this is my the size that came in my container. So I'm going to add two bay leaves to each pot. Because look at that, look how small that is. We're just going to go ahead and add two bay leaves to each pot. It's just something about bay leaf. And this is me being extra. I am going to add some dried parsley just because just because I think it's gonna do it a little more justice all right so that's coming up to a nice boil This one isn't boiling because I added the extra water. And let's taste it. All right, so first we're going to taste the broth out of the big pot. Mm. 
oh that's full of flavor oh my gosh that's good Woo! and it's got a little kick to it so i don't need to add any more pepper and let's taste the broth out of the smaller pot. Oh, that's good. Now, I can't tell the difference in the two. Mine definitely has more oregano flavor. It is very strong. All right, so now that they're coming up to a boil, we're going to go ahead and... Um, oops, I didn't mean to have that light in, in y'all's face. But now that they're coming up to a boil, we are going to add in the um beans all right so now it has a good boil let's turn it down a little bit and now we're going to add in our sausage but first we can't forget about mine it's time to add the beans in she was taking a little bit longer to boil we we're not gonna leave no beans now this one was taking a little bit longer to come to a boil. All right. You can see that garlic. You can see how, how translucent the onions have become. And even the peppers and the celery are starting to, you know, kind of get um, a little translucent as well. And like I said, I was going to cover up the sausages but I changed my mind because I'm gonna go ahead and add those in um, since I'm you know bringing that boil down that way when it starts to thicken I won't have to reintroduce anything to the pot all right got the sausage in there the beans are in there now everything is in the pot and now we're just gonna cover it up and let it slowly cook. Now this pot here is a little bit behind. All right, she finally decided to start boiling. So now we're gonna add in the tofurkey. Stir it up. All right, guys, so while those um, pots of beans and rice cook, I am going to chop up, I'm going to rinse this board off, chop up our parsley and green onion, then I'm going to clean the dishes, and then I'm going to come back once it's finished cooking. So it'll be a couple of hours, so we're going to have like a little intermission, but let's go ahead and rinse this off so we can cut up our parsley and onions. I'm just going to cut up all of this green onion because it's just going to go on top of it. And it goes on top of it in the bowl, not in the pot. So we're just going to have, um, you know, just for garnish and the green onion. Green onion adds a lot of flavor to foods. I know a lot of people who don't cook with green onion, don't add it to it. But I'm also going to make some um, make Mongolian beef. Well, actually, no, he wants Korean beef. So I'm going to do some Korean beef and whatever onions are not, you know, used for the beans and rice can also be used for that Korean beef. This is something that you can just grow in your, um, keep in your kitchen or you can grow it outside. When you buy your um, green onions from the grocery store, just cut it down. I think I said this to you guys um, in the garden video. But if I didn't, you're going to just take your green onion and you know how it comes in the bunch. At the end, look at the end of your green onions and you should see some roots on it. Stick that in water and you will begin to root. It just will continue to grow more onions. It'll just continue to shoot up. And it's the same way for lemongrass. Let me show you that because I have lemongrass that, that is doing the same thing. All right. So if you notice here, you'll see where I cut the lemongrass. You see that? And all the tall shoots are what shot up. I sat it in water and look, you can see roots. It's it's rerooting itself. Look at that. And all I'm gonna do is, I got, that's basil. Um, all I'm gonna do is stick it in the ground. Now you can keep it in your kitchen and let it continue to create more shoots. And look, look at that. We got roots on the end there. But a lot of the things that we get in the grocery store um 
we can save ourselves some money by just using what we get from the grocery store if it's a good product now i ain't gonna say everything but you can do that with your basil most of your herbs you can root them um in water you just sit them in water they will grow roots and you just have an endless supply of whatever it is you're you're needing for those of you who may not have heard in the beginning you may be um watching the the middle we're making beans and rice and because i did not have red beans we're having pencil beans and rice which smells amazing it smells the same and i'm pretty sure it's going to be just as good because what i just tasted broth the broth of it really full of flavor so i can only imagine what those beans are going to taste like all right so i'm back and here's the beans and rice bowl is super hot i've already tasted it oh, so good like the flavors are there the beans are perfectly cooked had to say my grace mm. Mm -mm -mm. oh my gosh i don't know i may use pinto beans again because the beans are actually softer than the kidney beans. And this is my first time fixing it with the meat substitute, the tofurkey sausage. And it is good. The sausage, I was concerned while it was cooking. I was like, oh my God, I feel like that sausage is going to get mushy. It did not. It kept the crispiness around the edges. Mm, 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 mm. This is so good. So... I hope you guys try, if you like this type of food, to either make red beans and rice, pinto beans and rice, whichever you choose. I'm going to give y'all one quick taste. Go ahead. Take a bite. Take a bite. All right. From my heart to yours, from my kitchen to yours. Happy cooking. I bid you nothing but love, peace, and blessings, and I'll see you on the next video.